Greetings, let's see what's new in FL Studio 12.5. This update is packed with new features and the video is lengthy, so if you're short on time, check the video information for a timed index. Okay, let's start with the playlist. The picker panel. To open the panel, focus the playlist and use Alt plus P. The picker panel shows all the patterns, audio clips and automation in the project. Notice as I select patterns, the pattern selector reflects that pattern. Right click the filter icons to sort by name, color, and if it's an audio clip, by mixer track number. Selecting unused will show any content not used in the playlist. So this unused harp pattern was selected. I can hold Alt plus right click to preview it. To check that I really don't want it, and now I can delete it without fear of messing up my project. You can make multiple selections too. I'll select these three patterns and then right click any in the group and choose select in playlist and they're selected. So I can delete them as an example. For pattern management, the panel allows you to multiple recolor and rename. If I select all the patterns, then right click, rename and recolor Notice the new twin color selector to the right. This shows the start and end color for multiple selection. And when I hit enter, I get my gradient. Renaming is the same deal. I'll rename these drums to percussion. Easy. Okay, let's look at another handy workflow feature, rendering patterns to audio. This pattern is playing a Victoria Vocals resynthesized patch in Harma. That, as you can see, has a new vectorial interface. We'll look at some other updated plugins later. When rendering patterns to audio, keep in mind that the pattern can include multiple channel instruments. And so, any rendered audio may involve multiple mixer tracks. If I right click the clip, there are two options. Quick render as audio clip. This uses the default render settings and render as audio clip. I'll choose that as it opens the render dialog. Important here are the new miscellaneous options, enable master and insert effects. Usually you'll want the master effects off and the insert on. So you'll capture all the insert effects with the audio clip, but as it will be sent to the master, you don't want to double up on the master effects. I have leave remainder on, so the fading, trailing audio effects aren't lost. So there's the audio clip of the vocal number two pattern. In this case, I can replace that pattern with audio. Excellent. However, remember that pattern audio is context dependent, as playlist automation can change the way a pattern sounds each time it's used. So you'll need to think about or plan how and where to use this feature. FL Studio 13 will bring some big changes, but for now, we're sure this will come in handy for many. Another workflow helper is the Add New Pattern plus button on the lower panel. Click to open the standard Add Pattern dialog with naming. You can make single or multiple selections and then drop them on the playlist track headers to auto rename the tracks, or drop the content directly on the playlist patterns, audio clips, or automation. 
For those of you lamenting the block track workflow, last seen in FL Studio 11, we have a new macro. See the tools, macros, lock all tracks to content. Now whatever content we drop onto a track, it will be locked to that source. So track one is locked to drums, track four, kick, piano on five. So a nod to block track workflow there. If you want to go back and forth, you can also unlock tracks with the related macro, unlock all tracks from content. A nice bonus, accepting the resize tracks to default pop-up will allow you to fix a project where track sizes have become mixed up even if the tracks were not locked to content. For context awareness, the playlist and piano roll have a new scroll bar overview mode. Select view, mini playlist preview and enable. And there's a double hide option. The yellow triangle is a time marker. You can choose to show these or not. And as noted, the piano roll has the same option, independent of course. View, mini piano roll preview. So this will help with positional context with complex projects. Another change, holding control plus mouse wheel on the pattern selector at the top, now shows the empty channels in the pattern too. On the main menus, there's a view, close all plugin windows. This will help where you have projects that have too many plugins open. Next, plugin wrappers now have an enhanced preset selector. Right click opens the preset in the browser. Left click opens a normal selector. Excellent. While we're looking at the plugin window, there's now a general settings hide plugin window toolbar by default option. When this is selected, plugins open with the toolbar closed. Unless, of course, you've manually opened it, then the plugin will remember that state. Finally, under the banner of Workflow Helpers, you can now right click automation points and type in values. Point 0.5, for example. New plugin. We're excited to announce Fruity Delay 3, included free with all editions of FL Studio. Delay 3 is an advanced analog style tape delay plugin where delay time can be automated and it can perform tempo sync delay as project BPM is changing. Delay 3 includes filtering and distortion options for the delay feedback. These can be driven into self oscillation for special effects. Of course, you have normal delay presets, but let's see a tempo sync delay. Dream. Right, we're looking forward to hearing what you can do with that one. Direct Wave has had the long awaited vectorial makeover. Zone, Sample. Notice the updated editor with Edison style options. As Direct Wave is vectorial, you can now expand the plugin, making zone editing easier. Clicking here will add some vertical height which will help when editing velocity layers in the sample zones. On the Options tab, High Quality Rendering will increase the temporal resolution of all automatable parameters on DirectWave to near audio rate frequencies. This uses more CPU, but allows for complex and fast modulation of parameters without artifacts. Think FM and AM modulation. 
It's particularly useful with filters. For example, if you're wondering where the VST sampling option has gone, we've moved it to the channel rack and made it even better. For example, let's convert this harmless patch to a direct wave instrument. We do this by right clicking its channel and selecting create direct wave instrument. This will also work with layers and patcher instances. So all the layer children or entire patcher chains can now be converted to direct wave instruments. After choosing the save location, we have some controls, including the low and high note, number of samples per zone, one means a new sample on every note. Root note offset chooses where the root note is in the zone. And many other options. Check the manual for details. Make sure normalize is on, otherwise the samples will probably be too quiet. Finally, choose to record with or without master and insert effects. In this case, we'll record it dry. And there's our sampled instrument. If you edit a sample in direct wave, make sure to enable monolithic mode in the settings or save a copy of the patch and reload it into the project. Otherwise, those edits will be lost. If I send that to the same mixer track as the original Harmless, number 14, we've basically frozen the channel plugin. Fruity Pad Controller, or FPC, also gets a vectorial makeover. Resize it to make editing envelopes easier. Click the gear icon to change the pad view. This now shows a dual bank view. Drag on the window to resize the pads. Click the gear icon again to show bank A, and resize as desired. Useful on touch monitors. To change the colour of the pads, click the pad to select it and then use the menu here at the top to change the name or add a colour and an icon. It certainly makes life easier knowing that this is a kick and these are toms. There's also an automatable pitch control per pad. And this applies to all layers on the pad. Patcher. Patcher now multi-threads plugins. You can right click nodes to insert plugins directly to that node. On the Surface tab, you can now directly access the updated Control Creator. This also applies to the Surface plugin. Control Creator has new preset and history tabs. I can select the preset, edit it, shades of green, and drag and drop it onto the surface. Or you can load something from the history, save it to the presets, give it a name, I'll call it mine, and now it shows under the style options. Let's link that to Harma. Another new feature of the filters, in addition to left clicking them, you can now middle click to solo them. This can help when you're working on a complex project with lots of connections and you need to simplify the view. And while we're in a middle clicky mood, you can also middle click Patcher's title bar to rename the Patcher preset. Then save the preset as you like. Finally for now, back to the Surface tab, 
you can multiple select controls, right click them and align them as per the options shown. Edison, it now displays the length of selections in brackets here. You can show it in samples, minutes or the timeline. So if you want to know the period of this waveform in samples, it's 1002. Perfect. MIDI out. There's now a performance oriented option on the control knobs. Click the gear icon and select note. The knob will now output MIDI notes to the target plugin. It works particularly well with percussion samplers and samples. Importantly, the note value of zero sends the note off command. Transistor bass. We now have two new controls, gate length and 303 pulse. Gate length changes the length of the gate, which is a nice enhancement. If we deselect the sequencer and effects, play a square wave pulse and switch, you can hear subtle changes in the sound. We've tweaked this version to sound exactly like the original TB303. We used this in our recent transistor bass versus TB303 comparison video. See the video info for the link. Notice LFO to pulse width, LFO rate and pulse width controls have been disabled in this mode. This is to closely match the original TB303 that doesn't have these modulations. Touch controllers. Tap the touch controllers icon to open. Then you can play and record notes from whatever controller is selected using a touchscreen or mouse. Click and drag at the top of the keyboard to move left and right. Right click to change the root note. Great for lazy key changes. Right clicking a channel and selecting receive notes from typing keyboard will also lock the touch controller to that channel. Click the gear icon to go into edit mode. Here you can add note labels, switch vertical velocity, which is vertical position on the keys, and if you're using a touchscreen, change the root note, key size, and even add a second keyboard. When you have two keyboards, selecting each will allow you to change the parameters for them independently. I'll switch to pad mode. Now in edit mode, you have similar controls. You can change the color of the last selected pad, assign notes, etc. And you can max out the pads with a 16 by 8 matrix, which is enough for all 128 MIDI notes. Let's check a demo from Nucleon. <laughs> For those of you waiting for the FL Studio 12.5 Mac OS version of FL Studio, we've put a link in the video description where you can follow development. And if you own it, it's available for download and testing. And with that, we've wrapped up the most important changes to FL Studio 12.5. We're sure you'll be excited to learn that our next focus is FL Studio 13. So keep an eye on Loop Talk, where we will be releasing the beta version soon. Until then, enjoy FL Studio 12.5.